Hey guys and welcome to Natural Aesthetics. Three training sessions worth of footage. Upper body, lower body and upper body. Pretty good week of training in general. Missed a couple of reps here and there. Starting to feel a little bit sluggish on some of the lifts. Therefore I've opted to take a deload week um, after these sessions. So just to allow my body to recover, to recuperate slightly um, and hopefully to continue pushing forwards after that week, you know, feeling fresh. So I will still be training, it will just be generally less volume per session. And an easy way to work that out, well, you know, if you're interested in how much you're doing per session in terms of the total tonnage or kilos, is to simply times the reps by the weight you're using on an exercise and then the sets. So for example, if you're using 100 kilos for bench and you do five sets of 10, 10 times 100 kilos is 1,000 kilos or a ton times that by five for five sets and you've got five tons, 5,000 kilos. So um, it's a good way to gauge how much work you're doing. The higher those numbers creep up, then the more it starts to affect me, the more I have to pay attention to sleep, food, and work and recovery. If I don't get enough sleep in, then it becomes very hard to train hard. If you don't eat, eat enough, then not only will you not have enough energy to lift the weights you need to but obviously you won't grow because there's no surplus of calories there's no calories for which the tissue to be formed thirdly if you work too much there's too much mental stress too much physical movement if you're perhaps laboring or doing some sort of physical job your muscles are going to become tired and um, recovery if you don't recover enough in terms of mobility stretching bone rolling you know whatever you have to do ice baths cold showers whatever then you'll find it harder and harder to perform and to lift the weights you want to lift and to train the way you want to train. So the deload will in fact take the total volume down and allow myself to train still, but done in a reasonable fashion that won't tire me out, allow my body to recover. So this is my first upper body day for last week. Pretty good session, um, benching, overhead press, pull-ups and low row, and then followed by my heavy arm exercises, close grip bench and cheat curls. Um, the first curls that you saw the supinated style, so palms up style. So the idea here is to bring the side of the dumbbell closest to your little finger up and out towards the outside of your shoulder for maximal bicep contraction. Now the great thing about cheat curls is that they always work the forearms hard. If you're a good cheat curler then you're always going to have good forearms. Went up to 50k prior to these um, hammer curls. Um, Probably my strongest type of curl, and these hammer curls were 34, high rep sets. Um, felt my grip slipping a little bit towards the end, so I had to use some wraps. Um, but I tell you, the burn that I got in the next sort of three days after these were phenomenal. And not that it's any indication that my muscles are growing. Um, you know, you can squat one rep, two reps, um, and if consistently you're putting more weight on the bar, your legs are going to get bigger without ever having any burn of any sort. But is an indication to me that I'm certainly working the biceps, contrary to popular belief that curls done in that cheating style don't work the biceps, a load of nonsense. Go heavy, use momentum, but I also train very strict as well when I have to. So low body day, squats 192.5 for free, nailed it, um, really pleased with that. I'm now pretty much at the same strength um, as I was prior to my nerve inflammation, so last winter. Um, I'm a little bit lighter as well, 3K lighter. I don't take any caffeine, protein powders, pre-workouts. Um, so in general, I'm pretty chuffed with that. I've reached that level of strength. 192 for three is a PB. 191 for four was my best last time, but you know, I'm taking this as a personal best just because of the fact that I'm lighter and I'm doing it without stimulants. So this is one of my clients, Sean. Um, he started off very, very weak on the squat, incredibly tight in most areas of his body, but we've worked on it. He's now doing some poor squats here with 65 kilos, I believe. We do these at the end of the session, um, and he's up to 85 for five sets of five. So it's a testament to anyone, no matter what level you start at, there's improvements to be made. You know, and if you set yourself reasonable goals and enough time to do them in, be patient and you can achieve anything.
So this is me doing my pause set to finish 140 for eight. Felt pretty easy on these, no problem at all actually. This was in fact easier than my last session. The idea behind pause squats is to simply make the exercise harder. I'm taking momentum out of the lift. Usually I, I use the stretch reflex at the bottom, so I'm almost bouncing out of the hole, but obviously on poor squats I can't. Um, I get a really, really good pump from doing poor squats actually. It's much more controlled, focusing on the quads and glutes a little bit more than you know my heavy, heavy sets where I'm just really focusing it on getting the reps up and finishing the set. Here we are doing some hamstring curls and calf raises, some supersets to finish for the lower body session. Hitting it hard, hitting it fast, we're pretty much in and out in an hour, maybe an hour and 15 for this session. So this is quite quick. Upper body day two to finish, um, bench press to start. Start to feel a little bit slow during this session, hence why, as I said earlier, I'm going to deload next week. This is my warm up set, or one of my, my warm up sets that I do. I do do about four, maybe five warm up sets prior to my heavy lift. This is 125 for free. Reasonably pleased with how this, this went up, but a little bit slow, didn't feel like I had complete control and certainly didn't feel like I could have done four. Um, you know, there was no more in the tank, which is kind of disappointing. Moved on to heavy dumbbells. Um, now it's interesting this, uh, I've got two sets here, both at 50 kilos. Now one of the dumbbells was spinning, one of the dumbbells was fixed, it tightened up one of the dumbbells and it made a massive difference how that weight felt in my hand and therefore chest and shoulders. The fixed dumbbell felt a lot heavier. So bear that in mind um, with you know, if you're choosing gyms, whether they have spinning dumbbells or fixed dumbbells, generally it's nicer to have a dumbbell that moves around um, the gripping bar. So that set was a much better set, uh, much more intense, quicker, and the reps subsequently felt a lot easier. A lot of it is just mentality, because I had a little bit of a niggly shoulder prior to these. If you go into the set kind of a little bit worried, a little bit anxious. So I do two heavy sets. Um, and then two lighter sets, the lighter sets from 44 kilos for two sets of eight. Heavy barbell rows, which I haven't done in a couple of weeks. They've been a bit sporadic with these, um, therefore they felt quite heavy. 155 for two sets of five, followed by 135 for two sets of eight. Um, that's feeling pretty light now, that weight. Anything up to about 145 is feeling quite light. Also did some arms at the end, some uh, tricep pushdowns and bicep curls. I'm doing a set of cheek curls here. Just using a cable for a change. Feel quite nice with the cables instead of a bar sometimes. Um, and then I finish off with a high rep set, 20 reps. Um, focusing on just squeezing as hard as I can at the top, down slowly. Notice my arm is completely straight at the bottom, unlike the last set where I was kind of keeping the weight moving because it was a lot heavier. So that's the week of training done for you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little bit. Um, if you haven't subscribed, then subscribe. Um, and feel free to check out my Facebook page for um, pictures, like little mini videos that I don't put on YouTube and whatnot. Um, thanks for watching and stay strong.